The next drag and drop concept I want to cover is handling drag and drops that are unsuccessful. So right now in our drag and drop project, we have two listers here of two to-do lists, one with in-progress items and one with completed items, and we can drag and drop to-do list items between these two lists. And that all works fine, but what happens if I leave one of my lists, then the item gets removed, and then I drop between the lists where, as you can see by our cursor, this drop is not allowed. So it's not actually going to do anything. So we drop and we just lose the to-do list item. So it's not on either of the lists. But if we drop here, or if we drop anywhere that isn't successful, then ideally, we'd probably want that item to be returned to the list that we originally started at. So if I'm over here and I drop, then I would want that item to be re-added to my in-progress list. So to implement that logic to handle an unsuccessful drag and drop, that's all gonna be based on this do drag drop method. So this returns drag drop effects. So let's get that return value into a variable. So drag drop effects, we'll call it drag drop result. And to make this clear, we need to first understand how do drag drop works. So this method actually blocks until the drag and drop is complete. And we can see that with a breakpoint right here. So we start the drag and drop, and then we don't hit that breakpoint until we complete the drag and drop. There we go. So let's take a look at this. This was a successful drag and drop and our drag drop result. So the drag drop effects is drag drop effects dot moves. So this is an enum with a bunch of different values. Let's actually look at those. So we have scroll, all, none, copy, move, and link. Now for our drag and drop, the only supported action is a move and we pass that in here which makes sense because we're moving items between our two list views but here is the key part so let's continue here and let's drag and drop but let's drop into a place where a drop is not allowed and if we do that the drag drop result is a drag drop effects dot none so basically if the drag and drop was successful then we get our move result or whatever other drag drop effects we might have configured here. But if the drop was not successful, then we get drag drop effects dot none. So all we have to do here is after we get this result, we can check if the result is none, which means the drag and drop was unsuccessful. So what do we want to do if the drag and drop was not successful? We want to simply add the item back into our list view. So to add an item back into the to-do list, that's currently done in to-do item list drop, this handler we have here for the drop event. And all we do in this drop handler is check if our command can execute to handle the drop. If it can, we set the incoming to-do item to the data for our drop. And in that case, that is the drag drop data. And then we simply execute the command. So let's extract all of this to a function so that we can use it for the drop handler and use it here if the drag and drop was not successful so that we can add that item back into our to-do item list. So we'll extract this to a method and we'll just call this add to-do item. But this takes in drag event args and these drag event args are used to get the to-do item that we want to add back into our list. But if the drag and drop was not successful, we actually don't have any drag event args here and we really don't need them. All we really need to pass into this add to-do item method is the incoming to do item that we want to add into our list. So we can just make this an object. We'll call it to do item. And we're actually going to cut this out and just set the incoming to do item as the to do item that we pass into this method. And now where we call add to do item, that's right here in the drop handler. In this case, we do have drag event args. So we can use those drag event args to get the data, which is the to do item that we want to add to our list. So let's put that into a variable and simply pass that into add to do item. And let's just make sure this all works. So move into the other list and drop. And there we go. We do fire this event handler and the add to do item method does get called and we simply add the to do item. So now we need to just call add to do item for an unsuccessful drop. So we'll call it add to do item and we need to pass in the to do item that we want to add. Now for the drop handler that comes from the drag event args, but in this case, the to-do item is the framework elements data context. And we know that because that is what we're setting as the drag drop data. So we can just pass that into the add to do item method. And we'll put a breakpoint here just to make sure this works. So unsuccessful drop and the data context for our framework element is a disconnected item. 
And the reason this list view item is disconnected is because it's clearly no longer in our original list. So if we go away, it's not in the list anymore. So it's disconnected from our entire user control and from our list view. So we're not gonna be able to get the data context from it after the drag and drop. So what we have to do, and here we'll just see it again, disconnected still, what we have to do is just put the data context into a variable before we start the drag and drop. So we can simply set a to do item here to the framework element data context. So when the framework element becomes disconnected, it's not going to matter because we already have a reference to whatever this data context value is. So now we can pass this to do item in as the drag and drop data. And we can use that to do item for the add to do item method. And this should all work. So unsuccessful drop, take a look at the to do item. And it is our to do item view model, which is indeed what we want to add back into our to do item list. And there it is. So let's see that without any breakpoints. So we drop unsuccessful and it gets re-added. So we are successfully handling unsuccessful drops and it all comes down to the result of the do drag drop method gives us back drag drop effects. And if they are none, that means the drop was not allowed and it was unsuccessful. So we're handling that gracefully. So just a quick, simple concept there, but definitely something you probably want to handle in your own drag and drop situations. If you have any questions, criticisms, or concerns, be sure to leave them below in the comments section. If you enjoyed the video or you enjoy the channel, consider becoming a member. Other than that, leave a like or subscribe for more. Thank you.